RCA Selectivision Video Disc. To the average consumer, it begins right here with a player, a TV receiver, and a CED video disc like this one. To the people behind the scenes, the people at RCA, it begins with raw materials as pure as those used in medicines, plus a myriad of parts and procedures. For some, it's this master videotape. For others, a disc begins with a stamper, the actual device which presses the disc. Actually, a finished disc begins with these pellets. One RCA video disc equals about two cups worth. And one finished RCA video disc player equals several thousand individual components and parts like these. And every component and part must be ordered, inspected, inserted, and assembled before inserting this disc into this player can produce the great home entertainment and information consumers expect it to deliver. And deliver it does. Over 96% of surveyed RCA video disc owners say the Selectivision system is everything they expected it to be. Well, with that kind of expression of confidence in the quality and capabilities of this still new consumer product, it's no wonder the average purchaser of this player is also buying from 20 to 30 of these discs in the very first year of ownership. Well, in the next few minutes, we'll see how it all comes together. Now, we'll follow the uh, disc production process here at RCA Select Division facility in Indianapolis, and then we'll tour RCA's player assembly facility in Bloomington, Indiana. Oh, uh, you'll understand the reason for this lab coat in a moment. It's required dress if we're going to witness how the television information on this master one-inch videotape is transformed to the 12 miles of grooves cut into this copper video disc master. We're now entering the environmentally controlled area where all RCA video disc production takes place. See, this lab coat and cap help keep foreign particles like lint and dust to a minimum. Our master videotape has gone to mastering control, and we'll catch up with it in a moment. Right now, we have to prepare the copper master. Now, it actually begins as this polished aluminum plate. But when it arrives in this room, the copper coating has already been plated over it. Now the surface must be as perfect as possible. Smooth, flat, and defect free. A special barcode is added first. A similar code, like the ones you see on grocery products, is printed on the label of the disc caddy. Thank you. From this point on, this master is destined to carry a specific video disc program like the one waiting for us on tape in mastering control. As a final check, our copper surface is scanned by a laser for detection of any microscopic defects. And once the master passes this inspection, it is numbered and coded. Thank you. The mask prevents any breath moisture or a sneeze from landing on the copper surface. Now it's on to mastering controls. Our master is being set up next door here in the cutting room. In the next few moments, the master recording will be cut. This control board tracks the program audio response. Now, if a little sweetening is required, it can be done right here. Stereo, noise reduction, and dual soundtrack or bilingual audio is also processed through this control unit. Now, program video is also monitored at all times, both visually and electronically. The master cutting has now started. This lathe is recording a frequency modulated, or FM signal. Its diamond cutter is moving up and down three million times every second as it traces out that signal. And this is what's left over. 12 miles of continuous copper filament 
finer than the finest thread. And by the way, the lays are mounted on a floating suspension system. Just the slightest seismic disturbance could alter the signal cutting process. To give you an idea of the dimensions we're talking about, here's a groove mock-up 10,000 times actual size. These are the undulations of the signal. The cutter is vibrating three million times a second to produce. The player's stylus rides in the groove and reads the signal as it passes over the peaks and valleys. In contrast to this, which recreates 10 video disc grooves, one groove in an audio record would be about, well, the length of this entire table. The next process in video disc production creates a stamper for the pressing of finished video discs. First, our recorded copper is used as a form for making what is called a master. Then a mother or mold is formed from the master. And finally, the stamper for the press is formed from the mold. This process is called electro-deposition. Now, these nickel pellets are dissolved in a special solution and then formed onto the submaster as it spins in the bath. The stamper is then separated from the mold. Another critical operation calls for precise centering of the stamper and the punching of the center hole. The finished disc must rotate as a virtually perfect circle. Our stamper is now ready for the press. This is the press room. Our stamper and its companion side are now producing one disc every 40 seconds. Now this shield helps create a controlled environment. Filtered air is circulated down from the top through vents in the floor. The pellets, which make up the disc material, are automatically fed from the compounding room to this hopper. Then they're formed into shots, like this one. A heated shot is then fed into the press for stamping. The pressed disc is then automatically cooled, trimmed, and spindled. Sample discs are pulled regularly for quality control testing. Special playback units measure signal-to-noise ratios, count any defects, and rapid scan the recorded program to evaluate overall quality. If tested discs don't measure up, the entire press run will not arrive here where both sides of each disc are inspected for any obvious surface flaws. Discs that pass are now conveyed through a series of washes and rinses, followed by a final rinse to expedite fast drying. When they reach this point, they're only seconds away from meeting up with this.